Hey, today we will be talking about why deep learning ensembles outperform Bayesian neural nets, even though they theoretically do the same thing. Uh, in case you, uh, so to understand this problem, let's first go over the problem statement a little bit. So you can see the abstract here, and I'm not going to read this out word for word, just because that would waste a lot of our times, and because I've already written a pretty comprehensive article breaking this down, which I will be linking in the description below if you're more interested in this problem, if you're more interested in the paper. But effectively, what's really important here is this part right this is the part that confuses people uh, was confusing people that Bayesian neural networks which learn distributions over the parameters of the network are theoretically well motivated by Bayesian principles but do not perform as well as deep ensembles in practice particularly under data set shift now if you were a little bit confused don't worry what this is basically saying is Bayesian neural networks which are neural networks that are applying Bayesian principles should theoretically, you know, learn over uh, the parameters. So they, they should be able to tackle problems. But for some reason, when you have uh, deep ensembles, which like in, pr in principle, they do the same thing. Uh, Bayesian neural networks are beaten pretty significantly, particularly when you apply something called data set shift, which you can see I've defined here as simply uh, when you're uh, training and de uh, testing distributions are different. So you're, you're basically trying to be like, I'm going to train it with one kind of distribution and I'm going to see how well my model can generalize into another distribution, which can be obviously very useful in practice. Now, the theory they came up with, which you can see here, and I'm not going to read out, but all of this basically, and this highlighted statement right here, what this basically talk about is that when you have a random initialization, often what will happen is that you will sample from entirely different modes or entirely different paths. And uh, in a Bayesian neural network, you're uh, different uh, since you're only going over one initialization. You will you will get to the peak of that initialization. So you will get to like the peak eighty percent, for example, performance but it won't be able to classify the other 20%. And different, uh, so you can have different kinds of 80% performances. And each Bayesian neural network initialization will only handle one. While a deep learning ensemble, because of its very nature, can sample from different kinds of, uh, you know, trajectories and different kinds of paths. So it, might, it would have better practice given enough training data. So you can see them describe it here where they try to show the space of solutions along the single axis. And they're like, when you, as your performance improves, you can see that all these peaks are basically the same height. Like they're all at the 80% mark. But this doesn't, uh, like this and this are from very different, you know, initializations. So you can either climb up this hill, you can climb up this hill, but you can't climb up all of them. And by uh, essentially sampling from different types, a deep ensemble will do better. Now, if you still need to, if you're still a little bit confused, don't worry, I was too. And I'm going to draw this out so you can understand it better. So do, uh, do be sure to leave a like button for my insane art skills. So what this is talking about is that, I'm sorry, I'm new to this. So imagine we have like a cluster right here. So this is like our cluster one. With like the middle being our peak and this becomes our cluster three. And let's draw its peak somewhere here. So one, two and sorry, three. I am, uh, here, let's just go with this for now. So, imagine this is our cluster one and two, uh, uh, one, two and three. So what we have here is uh, cluster one might have a performance that looks like this. So imagine this is a solution set and the black area is what we get wrong. So it can get 80% of the solutions that are presented this way. 
cluster 2 would have a performance that looks like this. So this is also getting 20% wrong because it's from the same peak. But it's only get it's getting the solutions that are wrong here, not wrong over there. Cluster 3 on, would have something that looks like this. So I know that uh, this art might be uh, slightly confusing, but assume that these are all at 80%. So this, this, and this are all the same size. And for this example, technically this works even if they are different sizes, but for now this makes it simpler. So all three of these are getting 20% wrong and 80% correct. But as you can see, the chunks what they are get of what they are getting wrong and right, uh, uh, there are different chunks. So if you could theoretically have something that learns from all of these, you would get a hundred percent result. Now this doesn't happen in practice because it's going to also learn their mistakes. But uh, any well-designed uh, deep ensemble net will basically sample all three. So our deep one would have something like this, where it might get only a sliver wrong so it, it, it gets confused between after reading these but instead of getting everything wrong it's learned from the mistakes of everyone else and it's gotten a 90% score while the others are stuck at 80 so as you this is basically the principle behind the do it neural net now as mentioned I do have a very comprehensive medium article that I will be linking below so uh, do Check that out if you're interested in this paper. I thought it was a really cool paper and it goes into a lot more detail. The, this paper is called uh, Deep Ensembles, A Lost Landscape Perspective by Stanislav Fort, UEU, and Balaji Lakshmi Krishnan, uh, Krishna Narayan, and, which is uh, uh, who's the main author. And uh, I will obviously be linking the original paper in the description as well as uh, my my annotated paper, the annotations go over both definitions like what do the, what does a lo non-convex loss mean or what is adversarial training or, and also what I found important here. Uh, if you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe. I do post this kind of machine learning content regularly. Be sure to leave a like for the YouTube algorithm, it really helps. If there's any feedback you have for me or there's any topics you'd like me to look into or interesting papers. Uh, be sure to leave them in the description, uh, in the comment section below. And if, and if you'd like to support my work, for now, uh, the best thing you can do is share my work, which really helps a content creator like me, or use my free Robinhood referral link to get a free stock at Robinhood. You know, that's free money. We both get a free stock for no, with no real catch. So if you want free money and you haven't opened your Robinhood account yet, uh, do use my link below. That's it. Thank you. Check out. Be sure to check out the article. Peace.